Okay, all right. Good morning again, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about evaluation skills must haves. And if I can get my um, my uh, slides to advance, awesome. And I want to ground this first by saying that I am a community psychologist. And so I, 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 I usually introduce myself by saying I'm a community psychologist who does evaluation. Um, so I come from that perspective. So I wanted to ground us uh, in that today, Susan, as well as the community psychologist who was kind enough to like join us on our call today. So when we talk about community, we aren't necessarily talking about a neighborhood, although we could be talking about a neighborhood. When we talk about community, we're really talking about uh, a community coalition or a collaborative or some kind of organization who comes together or some social change effort. That's what, uh, that, that's what we mean when we're talking about community. And uh, before we uh, get further on into the evaluation uh, skills or the consulting skills that you need, um, you've just got to get your head around the complexity, uh, the web of messiness that is working in communities. If you like things um, neat and clean, uh, then probably community consulting is not what you want to do. And I would probably argue evaluation is probably not what you want to do. Uh, back when I was an undergraduate working in a lab, um, my uh, one of my professors was um, a neuropsychologist, and you know we did EKG studies and gave people like different kinds of personality and. Uh, uh, different kinds of uh, biological tests and it was very it was very clean it was not complex at all right uh, they either scored or they didn't score uh, community consulting and evaluation is not like that I have students working with me every summer um, some of them do quite well uh, in the messiness that is evaluation and evaluation in communities and some of them go running back to the graduate programs <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just kind of be aware that's our perspective. That's where I come from. And so if it's so complex, why the heck do we do this? Um, and this is my, I guess this is my flashback to my uh, high school days when I had braces and more headgear, but uh, we do it because um, if you're like me, you kind of like the complexity. You like the messiness. I get really bored if all I'm doing is uh, crunching, um, of, you know, some kind of data and spewing out a report, I would much rather be working with um, communities and collaboratives and coalitions where it is kind of messy, which is not to say that it doesn't make me want to scream on any given day, because yeah, it certainly does. So today we're going to really talk about uh, evaluation skills or consulting skills. You often hear um, them talked about soft skills. I'm not sure how soft they are. Susan and I usually use the term personal skills. You might hear me talk about those words interchangeably though. Uh, and then uh, technical skills. I think a lot of times in our evaluation space, we, we just kind of default to, uh, well, you either have quantitative skills or qualitative skills, or you might be you know, someone who uses mixed methods. Um, when we talk about skills, we talk about a lot of different kinds of skills in, in both the personal skills and the technical skills, and we're gonna go into that. So as I said, at the, when we started, Susan and I developed this um, self-assessment that I'm gonna share at the end. But just for the sake of time, I've just pulled out a couple of skills in each one of these categories for us to talk about, and then I'm gonna show you our um, self-assessment and make that available to you. And then uh, Susan will probably chime in at some point. So it's hanging, so give me one second because I'm thinking that's the internet that doesn't want to advance my slides. Well, love it when that happens. Where's the Zoom wizard?
Okay, give me one second. I'm going to stop the share and try it again. Okay, it's going to be like that today. It's just going to be like that today. All right, fudge, fudge, fudge. Okay. All right, we're going to try that again. Okay, awesome. Now that it let me advance, so we're going to start with talking about personal qualities. So the first one I wanted to talk about was um, comfort with ambu ambiguity or uh, and complexity. So as uh, I kind of alluded to when I showed you that that web slide that is uh, communities. Uh, when you are consulting in communities or evaluating community collab collaboratives or organizations, um, there is a uh, lot of ambiguity. You think things uh, uh, are, are clear and then you find out things are not as clear as you think they are. I had um, uh, an, a, a practicum student a long time ago, she shall be, she shall rename, be, well, she shall rename you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we won't, we won't say her name. Anyway, at the end of her practicum, I always like debrief with my students and uh, I asked her, what did she learn uh, from her practicum? And she learned, she, I kid you not, with Susan, I talked about this in the, this book that we wrote that we yet to publish. I asked her what she learned and she, uh, she said, I kid you not, um, I learned I don't want to be an evaluator. Uh, the complexity uh, just drove her crazy. She just could not, um, she just couldn't handle it. And then um, working as an evaluation um, person or a consultant who works in communities, you have to have infinite patience. Uh, community groups just don't move at uh, the time that we would like them to. It takes a long time for them to come together, for the, the Titanic to turn around, for folks to start moving in the same directions, uh, for relationships to um, become clear. And then you might have a couple of clients like I have who, uh, yeah, sometimes they want to do things like write their own survey and not show it to me and golly gee, can you analyze this uh, mess for me or um, have all sorts of reasons why the data doesn't say what it actually says. So yeah, uh, working in communities uh, definitely requires a lot of, um, of patience and that kind of goes around uh, goes along with the next thing is you really kind of have to be a sociable person. You really have to be someone who people can connect with and that they really like. Um, I'm a big fat introvert. Uh, so it doesn't come uh, being sociable doesn't always come like naturally to me. I'm your best buddy once you get to know me. Um, but sometimes I have to like kind of get myself up if you know what I mean. Some of you might be able to relate to that, you fellow academics. So then a couple other ones that I wanna talk about. So the ability to understand organizational context is really important, especially when you're going into communities where there's probably a history among organizations um, uh, that you may or may not be aware of when you first go in. So you definitely wanna take a, pol a pulse, a lay of the land. There might have been some kind of bad blood between organizations, for example, in community coalitions that often happens where there, uh, you have different organizations that are at the table, they're important in the community, but they don't get along. Maybe they fought over funding at, at one point or, you know, they're fighting over, you know, territory, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, you kind of need to know um, what the history is. I work in a county that up until about 25 years ago was all white. Right. So those kinds of uh, that kind of history is really important. Um, assertiveness and comfort with strong personalities really important when you're out there working in the community, uh, especially these days. Um, and then I will just say for the women in the room, I don't know about you, but I wish I had a dollar for any time somebody had said, um, wow, you're so opinionated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens all the time. Uh, Things get quite heated in the communities, especially uh, these days. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like conflict. So this is definitely an area where I have to work really hard um, to kind of stay present and to not personalize some of the emotions that are being uh, shared. 
And then uh, cultural humility and commitment to social justice and equity. This is kind of the core for community psychologists. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly have been doing a lot of work on this um, in the last couple of years, certainly in the last uh, six months in particular. And uh, yeah, when I do my own self-assessment, I'm, I'm finding that I still have work to do. I think that's uh, just the nature of being uh, human and hopefully we're honest about that. So now my slides are gonna misbehave again. I'm very frustrated. Okay, I'm gonna stop my share. Let me try this again. Oh, one second, people. Gonna be a lot of editing going on. Okay, let me try it again. All right, so let's talk about technical skills. So, um, so community inclusion and partnership, and when you are working in communities, it's really important as the evaluator. This is, and this is my bias. I think Susan would agree. It's really important as evaluation consultants or community consultants that we hold up a mirror to the organizations that we're working with. For example, so um, I mentioned earlier that I do a lot of substance abuse uh, uh, prevention, youth substance abuse prevention in particular. Many times the youth are not included in that conversation, right? So that's kind of important that I, as the evaluation consultant, it's important to me that I hold up that mirror and, and get them to take a look at who's not at the table. Because really, can we have an effective um, prevention strategy or a public health strategy if uh, the people that we're most trying to help are not at the table? So super important. So prevention and health promotion, you uh, really need to be, need to be grounded in um, some prevention uh, skills, some public health uh, prevention is really important in some of the work that I do with mental health and substance abuse. So you gotta have something in your toolbox to kind of uh, pull out. I'm not that kind of evaluator who just, uh, again, crunches numbers at the end. And then small and large group processes, hopefully that you've had some classes in uh, group dynamics that you can um, help coach the community group along the way when they do get stuck or they do enter uh, conflict. So you can talk about the stages of group process Process and kind of normalize what they're going uh, through and help them help facilitate them through that. Uh, and related to this is, you know, consultation and organizational development. You might want to think about getting some group facilitation skills, for example. Uh, knowledge of coalition and col uh, collaborative models and measures. Uh, Susan and I do a whole workshop series on uh, working with and evaluating coalitions and collaboratives, uh, and there is a body of literature on that. So if you are an evaluation consultant who, work, who wants to work with community coalitions, this would be important for you. Uh, and then public policy analysis and um, advocacy, those kinds of things. I've done a little bit of that, not a whole lot, um, but there's a whole uh, uh, a TIG even within AEA that focuses on public policy analysis, super important because we can have great um, public uh, policy, but if it's not implemented correctly, you know, what good is it? So having those skills might be important to you. Um, and then anti-racism, we've just gotten super explicit about, explicit about adding that as a skill. We can have a whole conversation about that. Uh, and Susan and I have been talking lately about, you know, we can have the knowledge, right? So an organization I'm working with has been doing some training on race equity and inclusion. And so I, ca I can have the book knowledge, but still not have that change of heart or kind of be aware of my own um, biases, right? So we put anti-racism in the technical skills and cultural humility in the personal uh, section. And we can talk about whether what you guys think about that. So the competencies inventory is something that Susan and I came up with, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And it's a self-assessment for you to take a look at your technical competencies as well as your personal qualities and uh, kind of do that gut check and see uh, where you are. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm going to try to open up the measure 
And Susan and I have taught at AEA. Susan, I'm going to ask you to come off mute so you can help me talk through this. So here's our measure, and you'll see we have like instructions at the beginning. And I'm going to put this on the Google Drive with Susan's permission. And I was, I was going to mention if they wonder where these competencies came from, um, they're a combination of competencies from social work, public health, community psychology, and some other areas that we evaluation as well. Yes, yeah, we didn't, we just, uh, we didn't just pull them out of our um, hats, our backside. <laughs> we did, we did some research. So for the competencies, you're going to be able to kind of rate yourself. So whether or not um, you have, you know, you, you know, nothing about this um, competency all the way to, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a rock star. And then for the personal qualities, you'll be able to do that gut check, like I don't have this quality at all, um, to the quality is typical of me and, and a few categories in, in between. So remember, I was telling you one of the things that I always have to work with is like, uh, you know, comfort with like people being like really angry. That kind of gives me the, you know, heebie-jeebies. So that's something I always have to work on. Um, so you'll see. So the first part is technical competencies. We have ecological perspectives, which is um, uh, kind of the, the way community psychologists think. So if you're, if you're familiar with any of the work like Brown from Brenner, where it's, uh, you know, levels of, um, the ecology. So you might have individual characteristics and community level characteristics, and then it can be national or even cultural perspectives. So the ecological perspective, some of these are going to sound really familiar to you just as evaluators in terms of, you know, empowerment and participatory techniques, ethical reflective uh, practice, racial justice and equity. So hopefully these align. These, these are not uh, uh, foreign to you. But you'll, have, you'll see where we give you an opportunity to rate your level of expertise and then also your need for the competency because maybe um, you might be uh, not very uh, exposed to whatever that concept is that we have as a technical competency, but you don't really need that for the work that you're going to do. And so maybe that's not something that you would spend your time on. And you see on the far left hand where we have um, a grid because at the end, you'll be able to kind of score yourself and make some decisions about priorities. So the first part of the self-assessment is pretty, it's pretty comprehensive are all technical competencies. And then we get into the personal qualities. And so here's what, what I talked about earlier, the tolerating ambiguity and patience um, valuing equity and racial justice and practice or, you know, uh, having that sense of cultural humility, uh, being sociable, that kind of things, communication styles, right? These are the things that people, like I said, typically call soft skills. I'm not sure if that's really a, a term that really serves us well. And then at the end, we have um, some instructions on how you can kind of do your self check. So Susan, do you want, is there anything you want to add about the, before I bring everybody else on? Not really. I think you covered it. I can't think of another thing. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop the recording now, ask everybody to turn back on their cameras and let's, um, let's have a conversation about these soft and hard skills. And we would love feedback if you use this um, feedback on this assessment tool. So if you use it and find something